Welcome to the SOB Radio Show, where we have fun, interesting guests, and hot topics. Each week, we offer insights into music, fashion, health, fitness, and humor. Do you have the perfect guest for us to interview? I want to know. Drop me a line on our Facebook page at Spunky Old Broad 1, or reach out to me on our website at SpunkyOldBroad.com. And now, back to the show. Hi, everyone. This is Gail Carson, and my guest today is Mira Rubin. She is a unique mix of a social entrepreneur, a techie nerd, and a coaching genius. She's a visionary who follows her heart and her calling to create a world that works while guiding others to manifest their dreams. Trained in NLP, hypnosis, and applied kinesiology, she developed a transformational modality in 1987 called Core Connection that she integrates in her work with coaching clients to affect profound, rapid, and lasting change. Her clients experience foundational shifts, a being that result in expansive new opportunities and accomplishment, an expanded experience of freedom, and empowered stewardship of their lives. An epiphany in November of 2017 set her on a mission to save the world and led to the start of the Sustainability Now podcast, which she shares hope and sustainability tools and practices related to food, energy, housing, waste. Uh, Mira, it's it's really, I mean, that's a long list of things (laughs) that, that, uh, you know, you, you, you want to accomplish. They're all wonderful and they're all fabulous. But, I mean, it's just, um, it's a lot of things. So how do you go about pursuing a dream of that magnitude? I mean, where do you begin and where do you go in the middle and does it ever end? (laughs) Well, hopefully it doesn't end. That's part of the point. Um, I I really believe that having a vision that um, is, is huge is a context in which to live life and grow bigger and uh, better than we can initially imagine ourselves to be. So having a big vision, I think, is fundamental to living uh, the best possible lives we can live. So, yeah, (laughs) is that a good start for an answer there for you? Yeah, but I mean, where did the epiphany come from? How did it, did it just appear? Or, I mean, what what made it happen? Thank you for that. Um, well, so the epiphany was to um, accept my mission as uh, a creator of something that I'm calling the Eco Park. And what this is, is a, a place that will be a global resource center uh, where like kind of like a sustainability world's fair where people can go and experience all different modalities for housing and energy and and learn about all kinds of uh, innovations that are currently available and that also are in development for creating a world that works. And I imagine this thing to be on the scale of the Disney franchises globally. So there will be global resource centers. And this is going to be a model for uh, sustainability practices and technologies that people can bring back into their communities. Now, this idea had really been generating in various shapes from the time I was a kid. And um, I had imagined sort of a theme park place where Uh, Originally, it was a historical sort of theme where different parts of the park would be different periods in history and people could go and live and experience what what life was like in those times. And over the years, it evolved. And um, what happened for me is that I recognized that the thing that, when looking at the world, truly broke my heart was the way that we're treating the planet and what's happening um, ecologically. And um, it, I realized that I could either be broken by it or I could be heartened by it. And I 
somehow the a synergy occurred to allow me to take my original park idea and create it into this eco park. And the epiphany was actually stepping into it. So I was at a training, in fact, a, a coaching program that I was part of. And uh, we did a process called the Dickens process, where you get to project your future from where you are in your life if you were to continue on as you were and uh, see where you would be and then recognize from that what choice you have on Christmas Day, so to speak, to change your life. And what I had realized in that moment was that I was living a life that really had no particular purpose. And that was really something that had been a theme through my life is just not feeling like I knew what I was here for and what was important. And um, I realized I had this big dream that I really never entertained because it was so big. And I just chose to say, hey, you know what, this is something worth living for. And, uh, and it's something that could take me the rest of my life to achieve. And, and that's a wonderful thing. It's worth living for. So what has been either your client's reaction to this or the public reaction to this? I mean, uh, how has it been received? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, you would think that people would say, wow, that's a crazy dream. And in the very beginning, I kind of got that kind of, that response. And as I grew into ownership of this vision, I'm getting a response more like, hey, how do I get involved? What can I do? I want to go there. I'm in. Um, and what I've realized since uh, sort of accepting that mission is that my bigger vision is uh, creating sustainable practices globally or, you know, supporting and propagating sustainable practices globally. So um, there are more and more people that realize the urgency of turning things around on this planet while we still have the chance to. And the thing that most people aren't aware of is that we already have solutions in place. There are, there are technologies, there are answers to our questions, and what's lacking is the public and political will to implement these solutions and make the changes we need to make. So by raising awareness, and that's what we do through the podcast, and uh, we had a summit called the Sustainability Now Tell Us Summit, we're raising awareness of solutions and um, helping to contribute to the global conversation that's going to turn things around. Wow. Well, that's a very, I mean, it's so ambitious. I can't even imagine. This is something that is so beyond my comprehension, but I think it is wonderful. So does this have anything to do with core connection and what you do with your coaching clients? Well, thank you for that. Yes, actually it does. So um, my focus in working with my coaching clients is to assist people to fulfill their greatest dream. And the first step to that really is letting people have a deep understanding or facilitating people and having a deep understanding that they do make a difference, that they do have an impact in the world and that there's so much more that they, than they believe themselves to be. And then to support them in dreaming their biggest dream. And I believe that we all came here with a purpose. And when we, when we dream our biggest dream and then live into it, not only does it expand our experience of our lives and give us a context for growth and evolution, but it also makes a, a powerful impact and a necessary impact on the, the rest of the planet. So, yeah. Well, you know, I'm wondering, because you're very passionate about this and you're very open about it. What do you do when you meet somebody who does not believe in climate change who says all of this is just poppycock and who um, really does not buy into this sustainability thought process. I mean, uh, do you go on the attack? 
or do you um, very calmly uh, sit them down? Or, I mean, I would think someone who has this kind of an agenda as you do uh, would find it very difficult to talk with people who are in another total zone. Well, Gail, the truth is it's getting harder and harder to deny climate change. And the thing is, I, I am not here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's do that again, because I don't know what you did, but there was a big scratchy, scratchy. Oh, sorry. All right, so start your answer again. So it's getting harder and harder for anybody to deny that we have a climate crisis. And um, that said, I don't really, frankly, I don't really encounter those folks. And if I, if I did, um, it's not my job to convert people. My job is to create the change and the way that I see, uh, okay, so I encounter those kinds of people less and less, frankly. And, it's, and the truth is that it's getting harder and harder to deny the existence of climate change and the climate crisis. Um, it, but that said, should I encounter someone like that or with those beliefs, it's not my job to be converting people. What I'm here to do is to activate the people that have an awareness, that are concerned, that do want to make a difference, that recognize we have a, a challenge. And I believe that the more those people are activated, the more the conversation will engage the people that are skeptics ultimately as well. We don't really have time anymore for skepticism. We have 10 years to turn things around, if that. And it takes, it's going to take an awake and concerted effort. And this is why consciousness is such a critical factor here. Because I, I believe that so many people are, are not making the climate issue central to their focus because they feel hopeless and helpless in the face of it. And the truth is when people understand that we can do something about it, that we can make a difference, that, that we can create a world that works, then, then they are better able to engage with it. If they feel hopeless and helpless and resigned, then there's no room for, for involvement or why, why would I want to look at something that I can't do anything about? In other words, well, you know, um, certainly there are still deniers. We don't want to say that there aren't, but there are. There and are many of them. Many of them are in our leadership, and we know that. Uh, however, I do think that um, it's just you are right. It's just getting harder and harder to deny uh, what is going on in the world. I mean, we see it in the um, Arctic. We see it all over. Exactly. Um, you know, it's uh, and yet there are people who say no, it's not happening. So, Gail, so, I just want to say, you you know, you mentioned there are people in our leadership that are climate deniers or uh, climate crisis deniers, and I just want to point out that they have a large financial stake and political stake in making that denial. They they know that it's fact. They know that it's fact, and there are deliberate and concerted efforts now to uh, quiet or silence science. And we can see that in the machinations of the government um, and realize that who is threatened is the fossil fuel industry, for one. Um, oh, there's no question. I mean, we, right. most of the things that are going on where people deny something is happening, there's usually money behind it in some exactly. way, shape, or form. You know? Exactly. So, so it's, yeah. it's, it's really a political um, uh, ob obfuscation. You know, it's really not that they don't believe it exists. They know it exists, and they're trying to bury it as quickly as possible to preserve their interests. That's really what's happening. So you also talk about clarity cards. What are they? I'm so excited about clarity cards. So 
This is something that I have just, um, well, it's something that I've been playing with for years. They started out as something else, and I just recently named them, and I'm on the verge of publishing the first deck of clarity cards. And what they are, are they started out as values, so lists of values, and each card has a word on it, like strength or integrity or honesty or any number of different values the first deck is going to be 125 cards with all these different words and the beauty of these cards is that they can be used in so many contexts so for example let's say i'm trying to figure out what my life's purpose is and who i am um, i can use the clarity cards to start making conscious my values the things that are really important to me and and use the clarity cards to uh, dif recognize and discover my hierarchy of values, which then becomes a tool that I can use to recognize the kinds of environments that are going to work best for me, the kinds of um, structures of my decision making process. Um, clarity cards can be used to bridge differences where each person can have their set of values and talk about, well, here's what I think is important. Here's what you think is important. What does that mean to you? What does it mean to me? How can we bridge that, that difference? How can we come to uh, creating some better sense of communication and connection? Um, they can, they have so many uses. They can be used in schools, inside families, with uh, within a relationship when meeting somebody new as an icebreaker. Um, all different kinds of contexts. So I'm very excited to be delivering this, making it available as a tool for people for self exploration, for community building, for uh, building unity and connection, and and who knows what other uses people will find for them. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah, it is, and uh, it's amazing the kind of discussion you can get going with just one word when it's the right word. You're not so, kidding. Yeah, it's um, uh, really uh, an interesting concept. So when you work with your clients, um, you're not working with your clients just on the sustainability factor, no. or are you? I mean, no. how do you assist your clients in pursuing their dreams? Thank you. Well, um, I developed a modality that I call core connection, and I've expanded my practice beyond using this modality, but uh, I support people by using the core connection process, which is a, a really magnificent process that taps into our other than conscious intelligence by using muscle testing so that I can talk to my, the, my client's biocomputer is what I call it. So I, I know through experience with this that our being registers everything we've ever experienced in our lives and then some, and that this information is accessible through muscle testing, through asking the body questions. I do that by holding someone's arms and I ask for an indicator of what's a yes, what's a no as I pull on their arms and I, I get a response. Uh, of a yes and no. More and more people are familiar with muscle testing and applied kinesiology these days. It's used for nutritional testing and all kinds of other things. But the, the way that I use it is to communicate with the other than conscious awareness. And then um, what happens is this, this process is, is particularly applicable for um, clearing past trauma or clearing um, anything that's in the way of uh, peak performance. So for instance, if I had stage fright, I've worked with people with stage fright, I've worked with people with um, uh, who wanted to um, release issues around money. It works on a very, very deep level. And as a result, people experience a greater freedom and greater expression of their authentic self in their lives. So that's one way that I help people. Um, I have been an entrepreneur pretty much all of my life. So I have 
uh, lots of business tools. And I believe we each have a superpower, at least one. And one of my superpowers is to be um, what I call visioneering. And that is uh, creatively reaching into the possibility of um, new ideas and and generating solutions and new ideas and and avenues. So um, that's another way that I work with my clients, helping them to get past their perceived limitations and also to identify what will enhance their lives and how how to strategically implement that in their lives. Well, you know, you mentioned um, the kinesiology and the muscle testing, and yes, it has become more popular, and it's something that people can do on themselves. I mean, they are able to test themselves and see whether some of the decisions that they're making or the things that they're thinking about are on target or not. So it's one of the uh, a very useful way of, of looking at things. But, um, you know, we all talk about where we're going in life and what's important to us and how we take on certain things. And um, why do you think finding one's life purpose is so important. I mean, I know why it's so important. I, I mean, I, I hang my hat on that all the time. But, me too, me too. <laughs> but um, why do you think it's so important? Well, I think that it creates a context for living on in every respect. So what I mean by that is when you're serving something greater than yourself. So for me, it's this big mission. Um, that what I recognize is that my life is no longer about me. And, and what I mean by that is that I'm willing to take chances to um, courageously step up into something that I never would have done in service of my mission that I wouldn't do for myself. Because, for instance, this podcast um, that I do, and even speaking here with you today, I'm actually quite introverted. And um, I have tended to be more of a hermit than anything else. But what I recognize for accepting this mission that I have is that I need to get the word out. So to um, be willing to not be perfect, be willing to make public mistakes and then stumble and fall and pick myself up again and keep going if it were just about me, I might feel too self-conscious to do that, but I'm in service to something bigger. So what I realize is I have to get up, dust myself off, and do the next thing. And so there's a sense of resilience and strength and courage and expansion that comes from having a purpose and a mission in life that I don't believe we can get in any other way. Well, you know, that is so true. I mean, um, when you get when you get to a point where um, what you want is greater than than um, than you than yourself, yes. Yes. your mission is greater than you. Uh, you. You step out of that little hermitage and and get out there in the public. And the interesting thing is, I think the more vulnerable you are and the more you let people in. Uh, to what you're doing and where you are going and all of those things, even if you do stumble and even if you do, you know, uh, have have some weird moments, people appreciate that. You know, they, they that makes you human. Exactly. That makes you uh, uh, someone that they can identify with, someone that they can can use and, and, and feel a part of. And, um, you know, it also are, lets them know that they can do it, too, that they exactly. don't have to be perfect. Exactly. Yes. exactly. Uh, and, and so that's why um, I so believe, and that's why in this particular program, which is, of course, for women 50 plus, I believe that that anybody can do anything they put their mind to. It's yes. never too late. It's a, a place for them to find themselves. And if the mission is good, if it's legal, if it's uh, moral, and if it's a good entity, uh, it's going to find its place. And so that's what you've done with this uh, sustainability project. And um, 
I just think that it's one of the better things that um, you could have chosen to do, which I think is fantastic. Well, hold on. Uh, we're going to be taking our break. Uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. My guest is uh, Mira Rubin, and we're talking about uh, sustainability and the fact that uh, she has these uh, core connections and clarity cards that she works with, and we're going to continue on with um, what she's all about. So stick with us. <laughs> 